and let's go back on over. So there we have that. And so let's just see what that does to the page one. So now we've got Sam uh, Anderson. It's gonna be, uh, have a credit. We'll talk more about the credit later, but just to get our, fo our formula down, we still have the 100,000. And then we've had the standard deduction is now at the 19.4. And that's because we're gonna say that it was boosted up to head of household. So we'll talk more about this, the, those later, but head of household, boom. And so that gets us then to the 80,600. 80,600 page two then has the 11,855 as the tax. So let's put that down here. 11,865 was it? 11,855, 11,855, okay. And then on the credit side of things, we've got the 2000 for the child uh, credit. So you can see kind of a worksheet on how the calculation uh, would be if there's a phase out and whatnot. So you have a choice then on your side, do I wanna add it as another schedule like the form uh, 8812? Here's your kind of calculation for it, but it's a fairly standard kind of credit. So the other option is that I, I add it as just basically a general credit worksheet in my Excel worksheet. And then do I wanna kind of recalculate the phase outs in my Excel worksheet or just basically populate it at you know 2000 for the general number and then adjust it uh, as needed, basically depending on the software. So I'm gonna do it kind of generic here. I'm gonna go back on over and say, this is gonna be another tab and I'm gonna pull this all the way to the right and I'm just gonna double click on it and just call it other credits. And so I'm just gonna make a generic one. I'm not, I'm not calling it the name of the form because I might put more than one kind of credit here. I'm holding control zooming in and I'm gonna put the title up top. I'll just say other credits. I'm going to I'm going to select the triangle for the whole thing, right click and format this as we do every time go to currency, bracketed numbers, no dollar sign, I'll get rid of the decimals, okay, home tab, font group, make it bold. And there we have it. Let's make this black and white as the header. So I'll go up top and say this needs to be let's make it black and white for the header. And then I'm just going to include the the child tax credit. So let's just say here, child tax credit, credit. Now you could, you know, base this, like I could calculate the number of dependents and then try to figure out what the credit would be and, and work in phase outs. I could make a quite complex worksheet. We might dive into that a little bit more when we get into the credits, or I can just say, hey, look, I can, I'm just going to realize that there is a credit and I'm gonna be able to start to assume that's gonna happen if there is a dependent. And so I can imagine what's gonna happen. And then I know it's gonna be like 2000 unless they go over an age limit, the general rules. And if there's a phase out, I might be, be then dependent on the tax return to some degree to help calculate the phase out and then go in and try to understand it, to double check that it's doing what I think should be done properly and so that I can explain the phase out to a client, right? What it's actually happening. So I'm just gonna do it that. I'm gonna make this uh, blue for our data input. So if you don't have that blue, it's down here, standard. I'm gonna make it that blue and then border it. And then I'm just gonna say total other credits. Now I might put more credits in here but now I've got my worksheet where I'm just gonna have my first thought process of where I'm gonna add the credits, which is gonna tie into my first line item in here. So this, this credit line, I'm gonna say this equals other credits, that number. This number might change as I add other types of credits, but now I can just see how everything's being fed in to this one form. So if I go back on over, there's the 2000, that brings the tax to the 9855. So if I go back on over, we could say, okay, the 9855, that looks correct, okay. So now then, let's pull this over here. So then we've got these other, other taxes. So one of the big other taxes will be like a self-employment uh, tax. So I'm gonna make a change that's gonna have a big effect on a lot of different things. I'll put in some, income into a business income, a schedule C, and that'll shake things up a bit. So we'll go over here and I'm going to go, let's go income. And I'm going to say we have a schedule C income and I'm just going to make up 
a Schedule C income amount. See if I can just dump in. Uh, let's put let's put sixty thousand here, and then down here I'll just put uh, twenty thousand as an expense just to see the calculation on a Schedule C. So if I go over to the Schedule C, which we'll dive into later. Now, uh, obviously I didn't add everything to it, but I'm just kind of showing what's gonna be populated here. An income statement on the Schedule C, 60,000 minus the 20,000 gets us to the 40,000. Now look at everything that happens once I do that. That 40,000 is gonna be pulling in to the first page of the Form 1040. Uh, but uh, the, here it is. And it pulls into Schedule 1 as well, which we'll take a look at shortly. But just note that that 40,000 is, is not um, the, the gross income, it's the net income. So remember when we look at our formula here, I just wanna point out that we've got income, which includes a bunch of different kinds of income. And then we've got the above the line deductions or adjustments to income, and then the itemized or other standard deductions. Uh, but this income line, if I'm pulling in some items, there might already be expenses kind of Kind of applied to the schedule in other words like when i pull in the net income in essence from a schedule c i already got all the deductions which are the business deductions on the schedule c the same would be true for like a rental property uh similar kind of thing for for when i sell stuff for capital gains like stocks because the cost of the stock is kind of like a deduction you can think of it kind of like so 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 that's something i just want to kind of point out here so I'm gonna add another form over here and let's add it to next to the income line. So I'll make another schedule for a schedule C to add that. So I'm gonna add another uh, form. I'm gonna pull it next to the income for the 1040, double click on it. I'm gonna call it SCHC and I'm gonna scroll in. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing and say right click and format the cells and I'm gonna say it's currency, bracketed, no dollar signs, no decimals, okay. And then this will basically be kind of like our income statement. Let me just check, did I put, sometimes I, I didn't, I put this over here on other credits on line seven. I'm gonna remove the cells above it or the rows above it because I do that sometimes when I zoom in too fast. So I'm gonna put my cursor on one to six, right click and just delete and that should pull it up to the top. Let's do that over here. This time I'll start on the top and I'll just make a mock income statement. Now, if you were to populate your business Schedule C income, we'll talk about it later. How would you get that data? You can get it from like a QuickBooks or something like that. You might not repopulate the whole income statement on your worksheet, uh, but possibly just summarize it here on the worksheet. So I'll just do a quick kind of summary of it. So I'm gonna say we have income. I'm gonna make this whole thing bold. And then we've got expenses, expenses. So the income line I said was 60,000. We might have, and then the expenses, ex, and then, oh man, I'm over here on column D, really? I'm gonna delete these columns. What in the world? Expenses. And then I think I just put something in advertising. Advertising. Okay. So let's pull the income out here. Actually, I'll pull the income out to the outside. Actually, let's put it in there and then I'll have total income in, in case I have multiple income line items.